Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today we are on Episode 8 of Power Tools for Men. Uh, John, what's going on today? What's the topic? Power Tools for Men, number 8. First of all, it's, a, it's part of the acronym Classics. Uh, the authors of this book have taken the uh, whole idea of creating positive, healthy masculinity, how to do it, and they've broken it into um, ac an acronym uh, called Classics, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S. -S -S. We've been doing videos on each of these aspects. We're now at the last one of the series, S for sovereignty. And I'm not sure I'm getting that right, but it's the idea of a sovereign, a king, the guy in charge, um, the, the ruler. So I think this is fascinating because... I've read the book and I didn't hadn't even thought of this concept in this way before. So I'm looking forward to talking to the authors, uh, uh, Rick uh, Simchek and, pardon me, Rick Bronick and Leonard Simchek. You'd think by now I'd know their names. Well, you know, it's like Jay, uh, it's like Jay let's see, uh, uh, Simchek. Or, or uh, no, yeah, let's call it yeah. uh, 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 Bronchek. Bronchek. <laughs> like Jay Lowe. At any rate, guys, uh, it's a it's a wonderful chapter, and you obviously uh, the two of you are experts in the field of men's issues, uh, having uh, done videos before, written numerous books. Each of you uh, given lectures and and for years and years uh, doing workshops with men. Where did you come up with the idea of? or the name sovereignty, because it really touches on a pretty basic issue for men. Yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll leap in here, uh, uh, Rick. Um, I see Rick as a king. <laughs> and we, we, we sometimes joke and says, well, maybe we're emperors. And, you know, I think sometimes men don't realize that we really are meant to be the king of our lives. Now, it doesn't mean that we're meant to be king over other people, but we're, we're meant to be um, masters of our life. And if we're with a partner or we want to be with a queen or we want to be with someone who has equal power. And so sovereignty is really about um, uh, being the master of our life. That's what we're, we're meant to be, the masters of our life, the king of our life. And so I always refer to uh, Rick and sometimes we'll joke and says, well, king Ricardo. <laughs> Emperor Leonardo. <laughs> and I want to say really clear, we're talking about being kings in our lives, not kings over anybody else, uh, which is often how people misinterpret the term of king. And we use sovereignty, frankly, John, because it fits well into classics instead of classic with a CK. Uh, <laughs> so sovereignty is the way we express that kingship. And I I'm absolutely right on with, with Leonard in that uh, I see him as a king, and in fact, as an emperor in his life, uh, taking charge of his life and making positive changes. Um, when we access the king correctly as servants of our own inner king, we will manifest in our lives the qualities of good, rightful king, the king in his fullness. Now, that's a quote from Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette, who wrote a seminal book in this topic, King, warrior, magician, lover. Um, I want to share a story about how I first accessed my king in a powerful way. I was leading a men's training uh, many, many years ago. And I was, as part of that work, I was setting up uh, a fire to um, warm rocks for a sweat lodge. Another car full of men came in who were staffing the men came out, said hi, and one of the men from that car jumped into my fire pit, kicked out my fire, and began resetting the fire in a way that he thought was better. I was absolutely outraged, but rather than screaming at the man, I walked away, I went off into the woods for a while, I composed myself, and I realized that I had to address him directly right now. So I came back and I asked the man, do you have a moment to talk? And he said, yes. And I asked him some questions, I said, Whose job is it to, to set this fire and heat the, the, the rocks for this sweat lodge? And he said, yours. And I said, you're absolutely right. I'm going to ask you to get out of my fire pit and let me do my job. And he immediately went to tears and he stepped out of the fire pit 
and he and he pulled me aside and he said, Rick, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I want you to know my father's coming through this training as a participant and I wanted everything to be perfect for him. And I over overstepped my boundaries and you in a kingly and kind manner reasserted uh, what your uh, job was. And I really appreciate it. And we got along great all weekend. As a result, his father got a huge gift out of the weekend. And that was the first time I remember stepping into my king in a very powerful way. Well, you know, uh, Rick, that kind of segues into to really be a king. It's really about fathering as well. Mm-hmm. And the fathering, as you know, I did a, a TEDx talk on uh, the importance of fathering. And my father left my own father left the family when I was six years old the first time. And he left the second time when I was nine. And so I grew up really not having a father in my life. And that's when I learned the importance of fathering and kingship is about being a father, a mentor to others. And uh, it's so important. I, I think of this quote by Frederick Douglass. It's, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And fathering, and this is part of being sovereignty, is fathering others. And it's so important in our culture for men to step up into the role of fathers. And if we don't have children, we can still step up into the role of fathering, mentoring younger men, because men crave to have mentors and fathers. And so I know, John, you and Art have talked about your family and, you know, you, you, you felt that you're, you, you had a very good family life and you could probably attest to the importance of having loving fathers engaged and involved in your life. And uh, all the studies show that, that uh, children who have engaged fathers, uh, active fathering in their lives, do far better in school and in careers. And, and so I know Rick and I are just really advocate the importance of men to step up really step up into being the best fathers that we can be. Now, I was a stay-at-home dad back in 1984 uh, to be with my children and, and to help uh, co-parent with Mary Lou um, at the time. And uh, when I look back, that was one of the greatest decisions I made in my life. Just It just bonded me with my kids. And again, the goal is to get men in this sovereignty to to be not only the king of their lives, but also help others and father others, so other men, so that we're there to assist each other. I want to add that the sovereign accesses the power of blessing, and that's very, very important for men to be able to bless themselves, bless their partner, bless their children, bless the family, bless the community, and also It's the way that we access joy. Men access joy through their kingly sovereign space. It's very sacred. Wow. So, you know, this this is, uh, uh, I I think it's fitting that uh, when we wrapped up our classics dimensions that we, we ended on sovereignty because really the sovereign king uses all of these, connection, love, authenticity, um, intention, community, spirituality, sexuality, you know, it, it, it uses all of these elements in the classics model and really invites us to really be the masters of our lives. Yeah. The, uh, the thing that hits me with sovereignty uh, is that as we reach the end of the acronym, uh, go through all eight of these aspects, uh, all the power tools that you mention and give us um, throughout the book that we can use, you're really talking about our personal need to become healthy males, but at the same time, you're dealing with society today. Society doesn't have enough healthy males. There are men out there who are not healthy and they don't understand it. And when you hit sovereignty, that's when it really hit me, that this is a dual, this is a book not only for individuals to better themselves, understand themselves, 
and quite frankly, for women to understand their men. But it's also a book for the community. It's a book for our society to read so we can heal as a society. Let's get some more masculinity, true masculinity out there and less toxic masculinity. So I really have to thank you, gentlemen, for a wonderful book and particularly for taking the time and the energy to condense it for us on Celebrating Act Two and do these eight videos. It, it's a way, very wanna, powerful thing. I want to remind our audience that if you're just joining us for the first time uh, at episode eight, uh, go to the playlist. It's listed below on our YouTube channel, Celebrating Act Two, and you'll be able to watch all of them from beginning uh, to here. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, uh, if you uh, uh, pick up your own copy of uh, Power Tools for Men uh, on Amazon or wherever you uh, uh, buy your books, uh, it's a great guide. It's sort of like uh, we made the movie uh, to go along with the book. So if you want to see how closely the movie and these episodes relate to uh, the book uh, and find out other new heroines and uh, new uh, kings and, and court jesters, you'll be able to then follow along chapter by chapter. So thank you again, gentlemen. Well, thank you too. Art and John, I want to bless both of you men, not only for the work you're doing in the world, but for taking the time to bring us on and spend so much time doing these eight fabulous classics videos. Thank you so much. Yeah, I want to echo that, um, uh, John and Art. Uh, um, the two, what, what you're doing in Celebrating Act Two is really helping all of us celebrate the second half of our lives. So really, as Rick says, many blessings to both of you. Thank you. You and Thank our you. kings. <laughs> to emperors. Emperors. No, king, king, king is okay. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.